Hello everyone, this is the Start Out Small uh, lecture. Uh, it's just basically a few pointers on why we start out small and uh, just to get everyone uh, working off the same hymn sheet here. Uh, test before you invest. Uh, I just made that up, I quite like it. You can use it if you like. <laughs> okay, depending on the product and supply you have selected, the MOQ will vary. Some MOQs will be quite high for the first order and that can be quite a commitment in terms of space and money. Often be ready to negotiate with your suppliers to make an order that is less than the MOQ. I will show you ways to do this in the next lecture. Having an order of a couple of hundred as opposed to thousands has the following benefits. The financial commitment isn't too high. Yes, for most people who, um, who are doing this course, the, the thought of spending thousands on uh, something that they've never done before or sending thousands off to someone they don't know, to a place they've probably never been to before, uh, for a product they've only had a few samples of, all that seems like a really big commitment. And uh, having that sort of financial commitment um, is just too high, it's just too much. Uh, some people maybe not, some people may have uh, a bankroll, they may have had a windfall, or they may just be wealthy and bored. Either way, I still wouldn't advise doing it. Um, it's a lot of money to send away, and uh, you could be lumbered with a huge amount of product that isn't any good. You need to still test the waters as we go. Uh, you're able to see on a smaller scale what is involved. That's right. Um, it's still a big operation when it gets to your house. There's still a lot of things to do and prepare. Um, once your product arrives, you need to have the packing materials ready. You need to purchase the packing materials. You need to get used to an online postage. I believe in America, stamps.com's the way to go. Uh, in the UK, we used Royal Mail. Uh, it's not a great website, but it's still better than standing in a post office for long periods of time. I'm sure most people in the UK and the US will know what I'm talking about there. God, it's awful. Um, yes, so there is still a lot of um, things that you need to do. You need to kind of get comfortable with the process of processing orders, keeping an eye on your itinerary, writing down what needs to be put into books and bookkeeping if you're going to do that straight away. Um, lots of stuff to uh, think about. It's best to start small, build up, into a bigger operation. The quality of your product. Like I said before, with samples, the samples a factory sends you are the best representation of that factory. Now, once you start making larger orders, it's good to keep an eye on the product to see if the factory are maintaining that quality. Um, often, what often you hear of uh, products, the factory may let things slip or the quality may get a little lower. That's something if you start off small and you have a couple of hundred, you can keep an eye on as opposed to just sending it straight off to say an FBA fulfillment center or something like that. You haven't got any uh, contact with the product anymore and without you knowing the quality could drop. If you, it's a, again, it's a trust relationship with the factory. You need to get trust in them. They need to get trust in you. Um, quality of product's a big part of that. So keeping an eye on it with the initial smaller orders is a very good thing to do. Building your eBay feedback and general credibility. Okay, we're gonna be selling on eBay a lot in the, in the near future. Um, I'm gonna say that you're not, or I'm gonna assume that you're not big on selling with eBay and your feedback score could be quite low. That does affect how much you can sell on eBay. Um, having a good positive feedback score, a lot of sales on eBay is very good. Also general credibility. We're gonna be showing you a lot of ways to capitalize on low hanging fruit on how to sell to people that are just around in your immediate vicinity uh, instead of focusing on big marketplaces like eBay and Amazon. It's better to get the initial sales from the low hanging fruit first before heading out into like big marketplaces where the big guns play. Selling your product to the people in your immediate area and your friends, your family, uh, people on your Facebook, um, on Gumtree and Craigslist and that, having people buy it then, you get immediate feedback from people. People you know are who are close to you are parting with their hard-earned cash 
to uh, buy your product, you're going to get feedback and it's going to be quicker than obviously waiting for a review on Amazon or eBay. So that's great. And that will build in your credibility. You're going to get initial feedback on the product and you can make adjustments straight away. Obviously not with the, the first order you, you've got, you get, but when you get your second small order, you can say to the factory, hey, these guys, they don't like the color of it or they think, you know, the bag's a bit a week or whatever and these things can be adjusted immediate adjustments will work wonders for you when you do get to big marketplaces because it saves your reviews and reviews are a big thing on eBay and Amazon as I sure you know get much valued customer feedback and make adjustments before your next big order well I just said this in the last one yes you want to get feedback um, you want to get it from the low-hanging fruit, as we discussed. Also, um, with your small orders going on to eBay and other places, um, you'll get value customer feedback so that when you start making much bigger orders, um, your product will be fine-tuned to make much more sales and um, not, damage, not damage your credibility too much with a big order, say, going to a fulfillment warehouse. Um, all of a sudden, those orders are going out. You're getting loads of sales. If the order's not up, to, if the product's not up to scratch, then that could be very damaging for you. Ironing out the creases is very important. Building your bank balance, always a thing um, for when you're just starting out. I know it was for me. The image of this guy tipping his piggy bank upside down is not a foreign feeling for me. <laughs> not so much now I do okay, but uh, yeah. Everyone needs to build their bank balance and build up a bank roll. Even if you're you're financially secure, you want to you want to work with money you've made from this and not keep dipping into your own bank account. So building your bank balance is definitely something you can do easily with smaller orders and build up. All right. Save costs by operating from home. Definitely. Um, the moment you start getting third parties, uh, storage companies, fulfillment centers, um, FBA preparation uh, facilities involved, then that's all cutting in to your bottom line. You don't need that at the moment. You don't want that. If you've got a space in your house, that's what you should be using. And definitely you should be going with that. So saving costs by home, and it does save a lot of costs. Um, it's more work, but like I said, this is DIY. It's getting your hands dirty, getting in on it, um, learning the processes, not just for um, running your business yourself, but also for when you do get bigger, you have a good knowledge of what's involved. Okay, guys. Um, yes, this is how to start off small. Um, there is a frustrating part to this as well. Um, if you carry on and start uh, speaking to factories and using the, the uh, techniques I show you in the next lecture, there is a possibility that the factory will just say, no, nope, we're sticking to our MOQ. Okay, that is not a bad thing. Okay, it's a frustrating thing, don't get me wrong. It is a frustrating thing, but it's not a bad thing because you're still establishing a relationship with your factory. Okay, if the factory is not gonna bend on a, a thing like MOQ, then they're not a flexible person to, or uh, outfit to work for, okay? You need to have people working with you or who want to bend with you, who want to cater for your needs. Obviously, you're gonna do things for them as well. Um, it's a give and take relationship. And you need to you need to have, find a factory that will do that for you and will work with you because they can see that there's a pro profitable relationship gonna happen, okay? So if that does happen, if the factory of choice says just flat no, they won't bend at all, then you'll have your, your samples logbook with your, your, your spreadsheet. You'll be able to go back, check the samples, see what other samples were good on that spreadsheet. Um, like I said in the uh, previous advice, it's order samples from multiple factories. So now you have a selection. Now you have your reference sample. You can go back, you can check, say, yep, this will work um, from your sample archive, and then go and email that one of the other factories and continue that way okay it is a setback but it's not a massive crisis okay thanks for watching i'll see you in the next lecture where we'll go through how to uh, cut back on those moqs